So straight away I'm gonna try and answer the real question right here, is the RG High New Gundam better than the New Gundam? And personally on first impressions I am inclined to say that it is, but there is one thing I really don't like about this kit. Hey what is up everyone, welcome back to another video and today I'm taking a look at the real grade High New Gundam. As usual, this video right here would not have been possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you want some gumpla of your own, including this, I will throw a link down there in the description. Now let's get right on into it. So that right there is what the real grade high new Gundam looks like out of the box and built. But before I talk about it any further, let's go on and talk about the build a little bit. So this to me is one of those kits that has what I consider the perfect build. It's both complex, it's extremely layered, but at the same time it is very very simple. There are no overly small parts in this kit per se, and everything just fits perfectly. When it comes to cleaning up the parts, for the most part everything doesn't really require that much cleanup, except the blue is a little inclined to mark, so I did give that an extra little bit of care when cleaning it up for the most part. But besides that, I only had one real gripe with this kit, which really took me off guard. That is, this is a real grade kit, a modern real grade kit, with metallic injection gold in the box. Personally, I cannot stomach this plastic, it looks so bad. Even in the product images, I thought it stood out so much, so I had to go ahead and paint it. So that is the only thing I actually changed on this kit. I hit it with a base coat of Chaos Black by Citadel and followed up with a gold by Tamiya. But besides that, this thing is absolutely phenomenal. The layering and the mechanics going on inside of this kit, especially in the torso, the legs and the backpack, is off the charts. Even the inner frame has so much detail going on. This is kind of inheriting the cool aspects of old school master grade kits with the outer aspects of real grade into what's, I guess, essentially becoming the perfect mecha line. This kit is mind blowing. And I will mention, even though this kit does look complex and is incredibly intricate, don't be put off if you are a beginner, it is simple to cut out, clean up, put together. And it is one hell of an experience. Now let's check it out properly. So just like with the Master Grade Eclipse, I asked you guys on the community tab what you'd like to see in this review, so that's what I'm gonna base the review mainly about. So first off, the main thing you guys wanted to know is some size comparisons, so let's get them done. So jumping right into the size comparisons with the tour of the shelves, so before I actually get into the juicy ones that you asked for, let's go through the usual ones. First up, there it is on the shelf with all the RX-78 2s, so you can see it completely dwarves any 144th scale RX-78 2. Next up there it is beside some high grade build divers and build divers re-rising kits. Besides some universal sentry mobile suits going from big to small, the big on the left being narrative Gundam, the small on the right being Gundam F91. Finally then, there it is on the deck of the Argama, once again looking absolutely behemoth sized, and it really does dwarf the Mark II real grade. So jumping right in with the direct 144th scale comparison, and there it is side by side with the real grade Oryx 782. So as you can see, this thing is monstrously huge. So we've been at the Pro Tools now, and this thing comes in at just under 15 and a half centimeters. So we're gonna say 15.3. And as you can see right here on the Gunpla Wiki, it says that the High New Gundam is meant to be 20 meters tall, but if you multiply 15.3 by 144, that is not 20 meters. So as you can see, this is a bit larger than it should be for its scale. This may or may not bother you. For me, usually I'm a real stickler when it comes to scale because I want my kits to look like they should look like when they're beside each other just for the sake of seeing what certain Gundams would look like if they were in an alternate universe punching the crap out of a Gundam from another universe. So part of me is bothered by this a little bit. The other part of me is not bothered at all because when I got the Master Grade High New Gundam Verka, I was actually disappointed in the size compared to the Master Grade New Gundam even though it is more accurate. So in a way I'm kinda glad Bandai went with just bulking this thing up for the sake of making a bigger, cooler model kit, but when it comes to scale it can be a little bit bothersome if that sort of thing bothers you. 
So anyway, there is the High New Gundam in its three different grades. I will mention I do not have the standard master grade, just the Verka right here. And when it comes to the High New Gundam, it seems like Bandai has a lot of issues deciding what it wants from this particular mobile suit. The high grade right here is pretty much an exact replica of the redesign. The Verka right here is Katoki's take on the old school MSV version. And what we've got from the real grade is something kind of in between them both. Both scale-wise and design-wise. It takes a lot of aspects color-wise from the high grade right there and a lot of design elements from the Verka right there. And in a way, I feel it's kind of smashed it all into a perfect design. I know everyone does not feel that way, but I adore this right here. So now comparing it to the real grade of its anime counterpart, the new Gundam, and all I can say is, this for a long long time was my favorite Gunpla kit, and a lot has come out since that may have shaken that up a bit, but when it comes to a direct comparison between these two, I think part for part, detail for detail, and the overall experience, the high new is winning out for me. Also, the wings on the high new blow that fin funnel wing on the new away completely. That thing has become a real thorn in my side. I did say in the original review of the new Gundam that this was solid. And it was for a while. But the kit itself has trouble balancing with that on its back, so it might fall every now and then. And each one of those falls makes sure that this gets a little bit more annoying time after time. I don't see this happening with the absolutely majestic wings on the High New Gundam. Next up there it is side by side with the Sazabi. This is what made Gundarium tier happen. This is the Gundarium tier standard Gunpla right here. This mixes everything perfectly and doesn't have any issues in the same sort of way the new Gundam has. This is rock solid, has great articulation and looks kick ass. And honestly looks phenomenal side by side with the high new Gundam. But of course, this Sazabi is not the counterpart to the High New Gundam. That, of course, goes to the Nightingale right here. One of the biggest high grades around, especially when it comes to standard mobile suits. So there they are side by side, and even though the Nightingale is huge, the behemoth that is the High New Gundam does hold up size-wise. Once again, there is a standard Gundam for scale. And finally, the last couple of real great comparisons. There it is with the last one that came out, which is the Xeon. And there it is side by side to where universal century technology will lead us. Tiny, tiny Gundams like the Crossbone. So now into that 360 spin and the aesthetics. And what can I say? I am blown away. The amount of detailing on this kit, the amount of layers, the amount of extras is mind blowing. I will mention once again that I am a little bit disappointed about the metallic injection gold and the metallic injection silver on this kit. The silver doesn't look that bad, but honestly, if I had silver paint lying around, I would have painted it, but the gold was pretty diabolical, to be honest. Besides that, I did panel line this kit using the flow type panel liners. That's these ones right here. I'll throw a link in the description if you want some for yourself. And I did use some of the included stickers, which I'll talk about in a minute. But besides that, this thing looks phenomenal. It's solid. It looks great, does have a little bit of issues standing up itself without propping it on the propellant tanks, but this thing is an absolute masterpiece and I haven't even moved it around yet. Honestly though, the intricate detailing, the layering is phenomenal. There's so many layered parts, even underneath the skirting armor looks beautiful. This is a masterpiece. A quick spin of the head right there and this has one powerful glare. When we got the high new Gundam real grade, that looked a little bit on the cutie side compared to the foreboding powerful look the new Gundam usually has. This one, it's got the foreboding look, no cutie head here. So before I get in a little closer to take a look at those details, I just got this comment right here right now from Jan Harris asking, can you swap the high new and the news backpacks. Let's try it out. So I will mention on popping off the backpacks, I did get a little bit excited. So the high new Gundam here does not share body parts at all with the new Gundam. It does share some parts of the runners from runner E and the advanced joint in here with the new. Those are just for making up the fin funnels. So those are quite similar, but as for the entire body, it's completely different. The holes in the back here look similar, but disappointment. It does not fit. What? Who did? Who at Bandai did this? There must be less than a millimeter in the difference between these holes. They're so, so close. The new Gundam's backpack is a little too fat to fit into the high new, and the high new Gundam's is a little too skinny to fit into the new. But they're so close, so close, I don't understand why they didn't just make them fit. It won't be a big deal to make them fit, just pare down one, thicken up the other. 
but it could have been cool to have them. Compatible out of box. Missed opportunity. On jumping in a little bit closer, this kit right here is an absolute feast for the eyes. The mechanical detail really does make this look like what real great is meant to make these kits look like. And that is what a mecha would look like in reality. I will mention it is missing that real grade staple that is the two tones of white plastic. Maybe Bandai thought it was busy enough already, or maybe there is two tones in there but they're so hard to distinguish I can't tell. Either way, it's not too obvious and it doesn't seem to be there. The part layering on this kit is incredible. Every part has so much going on. From the gold sections on the joints, the silver sections on the paneling of the shoulders up front, all the venting is multi-layered. There are aspects of this that open up to show even more going on inside of it and the inner frame is highly detailed too. When the knee bends, we get a whole lot of frame showing through. It looks fantastic. Honestly, anything that should be parts or color separated on this is parts or color separated. This is a feast for the eyes. Incredible detail. On top of that, the proportions are awesome. I know some people out there don't like the huge leg to tiny torso ratio, but that's something I've always loved about Gundams. Being from the Gundam wing generation, I guess, that was kind of the style there. Huge legs, itty bitty torso. It even was with anime characters back in the 90s. So this is something I like, but pairing it with those big, powerful arms and shoulders, and massive V-Fin makes this look like one hell of a powerful Gundam. It is beauty incarnate. So finally on to the last aspect of the aesthetics and that is the stickers that are included in here. Now these are nicely designed for the most part but I'm starting to feel at this point Real Grade has evolved so much that these are actually holding it back a bit. And really all I ask is that Bandai release water slide decals of these on the exact same day this kit comes out. That would make it a whole lot better. This kit needs water slides. But as for these, when you do attach them, that is what they look like. Some of them are large and fit quite well, but not in the way they used to on real grades. For the most part, these kind of look like normal-ish stickers, which means you can see the border around the outside of them, and in order to make them look good, you're gonna have to painstakingly cut these out a little tighter to the design than you're seeing right here. We do have those cool foil, real grade stickers in here as well on some of the joints and the internal parts to give it another bit of a realistic mechanical vibe. On the whole though, the stickers are cool, but not gonna blow your mind. On to the accessories. So moving on into the accessories and there's the real grade high new Gundam with absolutely everything that it comes with. And this kit comes with the standard Gundam loadout of sword, board, beam rifle and a bazooka. So that is the shield which is in some awesome color separation. The long range weapons which are the bazooka and the beam rifle. We've got three beam saber handles in here but just two beam effects in blue. We've got a whole host of fixed pose hands in here. That is five, not including the pair of widespread ones we've seen on the high new throughout the review so far. And finally in here then we've got an action base adapter but we do not get a stand. Anyway, let's check it all out one by one. So starting off with the expressive hands and the first ones we have are the widespread dynamic posed hands. These right here look great and very similar to something we would have seen before. The ones on the new Gundam. These are identical if I'm not mistaken. The same goes for the fists. Very nice looking fists on this kit. But they look pretty, well as far as I can see, identical to what came in the new. Swapping the hands is very simple. These are just ball joint attachments so swapping them in and out is as simple as that right there. I will also mention as well as looking the same, the ball joints are exactly the same too. So you can grab the hands containing the weapons off of New Gundam and just shove them into that wrist like so. Some compatibility here, too bad not in the backpack. So the first of the weapons we have in here is a pair of beam savers, or should I say three, we just have a pair of beams. That is what they look like attached and for the most part these are standard looking beam sabers just in blue. Attaching these is simple, it's just the usual sandwich style hands. The back of the hand is one slice of bread, the front of the hand is the other slice of bread, and that beam saber handle is the ham. Simple as that. When these are not in use, you've got a slot for every single one of them on board the mobile suit. The first of which is in the back of the left arm that pops open like so, and you can store it away like that. Close it up and it is stored. As for the last two beam sabers, they can be stored up on the wing units up back. So to do this, there's a little slot you could barely even notice right here that pops out like this and opens up seamlessly and beautifully. We've got a little tab up top, that is where the beam saber handles attach, and that is the same both sides. Close it up and flush once again. Beautiful. 
So I'm not sure who asked the question because I forgot to take a screenshot, but if you did ask the question, can the high new Gundam reach its beam saber in its left arm? That is an awesome question. I never would have thought to try and it most definitely can and look awesome while it's at it. We might as well try the beam sabers up on the shoulders too. And the answer to that is definitely can reach up there, but the armor looks like it's a little bit in the way of the handle, so I'm not sure how it actually grabs onto this without, well, wrenching the entire armor off with it. But yeah, it can reach. So I think the real great Hainu Gundam has spent enough time on the ground now, let's get it up in the air. So we do have a base adapter in here, which works in a cool kind of way, better than with the real grade new. Definitely. So in order to use this, you just pop off the backpack and this plugs into its back then, adding a second attachment point for the backpack and it feels like it is locking the torso in place so it won't flop backwards. The backpack sticks back on and there you go. I will mention that the instructions recommends using this action base right here, the Action Base 5. So next up and moving on to the long range weapons and we've got the beam rifle. Just like the high new Gundam itself, this is incredibly detailed. I have panel lined this as well as adding a couple of stickers. So for the most part, this does look fantastic. We do have that silver metallic injection plastic here, which may or may not look good depending on your own perspective, but the whole thing is very nicely designed. Attaching it is exactly the same as the beam sabers. That's a sandwich style hand. And once you get it into the hand, ball joint attachment into the wrist. This holds up perfectly, no issues, and looks phenomenal. When the beam rifle is not in use, it can be stored on the butt flap. To do this, you just pop out this little tab on the side of the beam rifle, pull down on the butt flap to open this little crack, and then you stick the rifle into the crack in the butt flap. Just like that right there. This can be a little difficult when it is attached to the action base, but in general, it's easy, clicks into place, and holds on perfect. Next up in here, we've got the new Hyper Bazooka. Once again, this is in all the same colors of plastic as the model kit itself. Lots of nice detail, and I did panel line this as well as add on a couple of stickers. To attach this, once again, it's the same. It uses the exact same right hand as the beam rifle, so no left-handed holding in here. Once again, ball joint attachment, and it holds on perfectly. We do have a tilting handle, so you can get the angle just right. There isn't really any issues getting this into position. It holds on to it perfectly, and it looks fantastic. Once again, this can be stored on the mobile suit by collapsing the barrel down like this, flipping out a C-clip that is stored away in the backpack and it just clips on like so easy as and holds on really, really well. So far, I love the way you can store all the equipment on this unit. Next up in here, we've got the shield. Once again, just as awesomely color separated as the mobile suit itself. One of the coolest looking shields I've seen in quite some time. I did pan line this. Once again, I used some stickers too. Attaching this is super simple. It's just a peg into the hole. The peg has a ball joint up top so you can move the shield in whatever way you want. Tilt, spin, and on the underside, we do have a beam gun and some missiles. This looks great attached. This is a seriously cool shield. So this right here isn't necessarily an accessory, but something totally worth mentioning at this point right here. In the back of the right arm, we've got a machine gun. And when you push the right fist down like so, it extends outwards like this. That is so cool. I love onboard weapons that are attached to the arms, especially ones that can be used at a moment's notice. So this is pretty cool right here. And also while I'm talking about onboard weapons, the Vulcans in the High New Gundam's head are color separated. These are in gray. So back to some questions and you guys have asked me quite a few about the fin funnels. First up, are the fin funnels the same as the real grade new? And that means can you combine them? Well, you cannot because as you can see, these are made exactly the same as the high new. So as you can see on the side there, these do have the parts where it would have been transformable, but they are filled in with plastic. So these do use the exact same parts as the new Gundam's wings, but you cannot combine them because those parts are all filled in and do not have the mechanisms. Next up with the fin funnel effect set for the new Gundam work with the high news wing funnels? Well, the answer to that is I do not have them, but you can actually buy them separately. So I do have the exact same effects just bought from a pack and they do fit in it. That means you can actually go out and buy the blue ones, which I also have right here, and those fit too. So don't be surprised if Bandai do release a set in future with these, just like we saw with the new Gundam. 
So one of the questions that was asked the most by you guys is can the HWS that is for the new Gundam fit on the high new Gundam? And the short answer is no, and the long answer is with enough blue tack you can do whatever you want with a gunpla like this. But yeah, seriously, I did have to remove all the back of the arm to get the shield on, the rifle fits fine, you can get some of the body aspect on, but it just isn't quite right. And when it comes to the skirting armors and the sides of the legs, I've not seen any obvious slots like we would have seen with the new Gundam itself, especially in the front skirting. So yeah, short answer, not out of the box. However, I will mention under the calf armor right here, there is an obvious little peg. Now this looks exactly the same as what we saw on the underside of the HWS for the new Gundam, but this doesn't actually have a peg on the armor for attaching into this, so that's an obvious sign that we will be seeing a HWS for the high new Gundam in future. So jumping now into the articulation, and first off I'll mention the build quality on this. This is solid as a rock, nothing is loose. With the new Gundam you've got a little bit of whatever going up on the wing, but this, this is rock solid. Mini Master, well, actually I think at this point calling the Mini Master Grades is a disservice. Rock solid. At the neck we've got a double jointed giggity 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 goo neck. Around back we've got this flap that can move up like so and down. This is so when the head is in the standard state you can't see the back of the neck joint but you can lift it up so it can look up higher when you're moving the head around. And on the whole the range of motion at this neck is fantastic. You're going to get everything you want out of it. The shoulder joint on this is phenomenal. There's so much going on in there. There it can go all the way to the front and back like this, very very nice, the full 360 spin as usual, and there is the arm all the way up, which is incredible. This is both a really intricate joint, but at the same time, very solid. We've got the full spin at the upper arm, a double jointed elbow bend that gives you all you could ever want, and as for the wrists as well as the standard ball joint that gives you rotation, flexion and extension, we also have a secondary wrist joint in the hand itself, which is a hinge. Pretty awesome. The high new Gundam is rocking one hell of an ab crunch. We've got a joint in here that allows the whole upper body to lift up out of the torso like this, then giving us quite a decent crunch to the front and an insane crunch out to the back. That can then just lock back in like so to hide that joint. If that was not enough, we also have a side to side crunch, but that is down in the waist unit, which makes all the side skirting armor and everything rock side to side in a cool dynamic sort of way. We've got that full 360 spin at the waist. Moving down to the skirting armors, the front skirting armor is ball jointed, so that means it can move up and down like this, swing out to the side like this. The side skirting also can move up and down and swing side to side. But if that wasn't good enough, there's a whole mechanism inside here that allows all of the front and side skirt armor to shift out of the way of the leg entirely for those massive front kicks. That is mad cool. Around the back then we've got a double premium butt flap up and down on hinges. The high new Gundam right here has the coolest locking mechanism in the hips I have ever seen on a Gunpla. So normally the hip joint is locked into position like this so it won't move when you're kicking the leg around, but if you pull down the armor on the underside of the crotch, that unlocks the up and down movement inside of the hip itself. When it's moved all the way to the bottom, you can lock that again in the downwards position so you can kick the leg around again without anything budging inside of the hips. This is impressive. And if that was not enough, we also have another locking mechanism in here. So while that locking mechanism we saw already is open, there is another little locking part down here in the back where we would have attached the rifle earlier. Pull out this part here unlocking this pulling forward aspect which extends the torso up a little further tilting it forward. This also features a locking mechanism to lock it in place so now the kit is that bit more leaning forward and that bit more taller too. This is incredible. You will not notice this so much from the front but you can see it from the back but still that is cool. So now that we've moved all that waist stuff, it's time to check out those kicks and once again moving the waist armor out of the way so we can get the full kick and that is absolutely ridiculous. Nothing in the way of that articulation. When it comes to the splits, moving the other side of the waist armor out of the way as well and there are- <laughs> it's, it's- the splits are gone beyond a standard splits. The only thing that is a little bit blocked is the kick out to the back because the butt flaps don't rise up too high but still impressive again. So moving on to even more awesome, we've got what seems to be a treble jointed knee bend here and each of the bend aspects moves some of the armor. The first part of the bend moves the upper thigh armor, it slides in that old school master grade kind of way, 
then the knee armor starts to separate, followed by the lower knee armor starting to separate. This is gorgeous. This looks so good. I'm going to do this all the way back again, just so you can see those bits of armor slot back into place one after another, seamlessly, smoothly, perfectly. That is, again, incredible. Moving down to the ankle now to test that functional movement on the ground and first off there are a bunch of hatches here you can move out of the way to extend the movement. That are the silver ones on the sides and then the white hatch on the back. Getting that now on the ground and there it is all the way to the back which is impressive. There it is all the way to the front and we've got two toe bends not just the one. So that is the tip of the toe right here. The main aspect of the front of the foot here and the amount going on inside of the ankle is incredible. We've got one hell of a joint here giving us a lot of pivot. Actually let's try that pivot out on the ground and there it is all the way from side to the other side. Once again the articulation on this is obscenely good. So now getting the backpack back on to try out the backpack and first up we've got that pickaxe round back that can swing up and down like so. You can take the top of that and point it up so the thruster thrusts differently. The wings then can move up and down like so a lot more than I'd expect them to honestly and they can swing all the way to the back like so. The propellant tanks on the back these are double ball jointed each which actually gives me a lot more than I was expecting right off the bat so these can move around a lot. So last up when the fin funnels are attached all of these can pivot side to side like so some more than others and that's them all I guess side to side they go. So now moving on to the fancy old opening hatches this kit has. First off we've got an opening cockpit door and the whole front section of the cockpit can open as a hatch just like this as well. There is no pilot figure in here and speaking of which there's no pilot figure at all in here. Those seem to have been scrapped lately. Next up on the shoulder we do have a pair of opening hatches. The first one is here which pulls up lifts up like this and then the second one is the outer segment which all pulls out like this. This can be a little bit on the stiff side, so take some care with this. Sliding them back in. Around on the backpack we've got this opening hatch up top of the pickaxe. You can flip the top of the pickaxe up like this then slide it all in into something resembling the redesign of the new Gundam. So this is kind of cool. They did add an aspect of making it more redesign-ish or you could choose to have it more classic. That's cool. Next up in the upper section of the wing if you do tilt up the outside fin funnel we've got a little thruster up there that tilts along with it. Pretty cool. We also have two opening hatches on the butt flap. That is these two blue panels right here that can close up like that. Moving down a little bit more and the lower leg has so many hatches it's not even funny. We've got an upper section that pulls out like this. We've got a lower thruster segment that pulls up like this. The two sides of the lower panels of the calves in white those can pull outwards. It's a little difficult I will mention but they pull outwards like this and then combining that with what we already saw down here which is that white flap and those two silver aspects you get one of the coolest looking segmented back of a legs I have ever seen. That is insane. Also these don't make it feel loose or janky or anything like that like some hatches can. These are rock solid and when they all close in like this you could forget they were there. So yeah, pretty much goes without saying at this point that the articulation and all the different gimmicks crammed into this real great ride here is obscene. This is off the charts and as far as I can tell, unprecedented. This is insane. The only real issue is it's incredibly back heavy. Not a big deal though. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. What can I say? The second this kit right here walks into your Gunpla collection, every single model kit you have will drop to its knees. This is the new king of Gunpla. Real Grade for a while was starting to make tiny 144 scale kits that feel like master grades. This has upped the level. This almost feels like a 144 scale kit that feels like a perfect grade. It layers so much onto layer after layer of awesome plastic. Once again the only real thing I can complain about in this kit is the metallic gold. That is a personal subjective problem. Besides that though this thing is perfect. There is not one flaw with this model kit. Everything holds together perfectly, it looks beautiful, no matter what angle you look at it from, it looks phenomenal. Opening hatches, articulation out the ass, this thing, honestly, this is Gunpla perfected yet again. I can't believe this has come on the heels 
of the Master Grade Eclipse, which, like I mentioned, became my favorite Master Grade, but you know, you can't really objectively say it's the greatest Master Grade around. This, I can tell you, is greater than any real grade that's come before, including the real grade new Gundam. I never thought I'd be saying that. This, in an odd kind of way of saying, is like the real grade new Gundam and the real grade Sazabi had a baby, because it's got the best aspects of both. This is real grade perfected. This right here is Gunpla perfected. If you can grab one of these, no matter what your skill level, you will love it. Anyways, always thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews if you want one of these. Link in the description for when it comes back into stock. And as always, I will see you next time. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every one of you guys who watches my videos, including those of you who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Van Fon, Sean T, Mr. Winter, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kuglock, Global Frequency Studios, Forseti, Caleb Engelhart, and Bakito Official.